Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn one of these into one of these. They are different. They look the same, but they are different. If I turn them over, you'll see there's a difference here in the sticker. Uh, this one is a TDS-2CM. It's a communications module for the uh, TDS-210, TDS-220, and TDS-224 series of scopes from Tektronix. And I believe they might also work in the 1000, 2000 series scopes as well. Uh, this one here gives you communications. So it's the uh, serial the uh, parallel or Centronix port and uh, the GPIB there. Now this one here is a TDS2MM, which is a maths module. It has the communications and it gives you extra functions like uh, you can measure rise time and full time and a few other things and also gives you um, FFT. So a poor man's uh, spectrum analyzer kind of thing. Um, and uh, often these are cheaper than these or you might get a, uh, a scope with this module already installed. And uh, yeah, it's great because you can take screenshots and uh, download waveforms and stuff but you might want those extra functions like the FFT and whatnot. I occasionally use that on, um, on my TDS-210 scope. So um, I've got another one which I've, uh, I've been uh, repairing, and or by the time this goes online, maybe I've already repaired it. Uh, so I want to upgrade this to an MM, and um, you can do that. Uh, you need a couple of things, and uh, I'll show you how to do it, and uh, if you follow along, you better upgrade your unit from a CM to an MM as well. So first up, we're going to need... Uh, a few components. Uh, you need to flash the firmware, the MM firmware, to a new chip and uh, then replace the one that's in here. It's just a plug-in uh, PLCC chip, I believe. Uh, so, yes, yeah, there's no soldering for that. Uh, you just unplug it and plug the new chip in once it's been programmed. I'm going to be using one of these, the TL8662. It's a uh, EEPROM programmer, very popular one. Works quite well. This one just came today and um, I've already used it to uh, to copy the uh, firmware out of here because this is a uh, version 1.04 so that's been uploaded to the uh, Tektronix tech wiki uh, there's uh, two firmwares are now the version 1 and the version 1.04 I suggest you use the p version 1.04 and uh, yeah I use this with an adapter and um, it works quite well so you need some way to uh, write the firmware to the chip a, a chip writer also you need, the, uh, you need two chips one is the new uh, memory chip like the new uh, PROM chip and you need upgraded RAM. So in here is a RAM chip. We've got to desolder that and put a, uh, a chip with uh, more RAM. And then we've got the, uh, the PROM chip, which is the one where you unplug and plug the new one in. So let's uh, get this stuff out of the way. We'll take um, this one apart and uh, have a look and see what we've got. So depending on which revision you've got, you may have to undo the, uh, the screws here, the six screws surrounding the, um, the plugs. In this one, I need to do that, but this one, I believe I don't, just because it's a different revision or, or whatnot. There are some of these where they have um, extra shielding as well, so you might have a slight variation on how to um, take it apart. So there's two tabs here and here, so we'll just push those out the way very carefully not to break them, and in this case, it just comes straight out like that. And like I said, in this one, um, these little pieces around here are actually part of the shield, so I've got to undo those. Uh, screws, but in this case, it's easy. And there we go. So you can see here we've got the uh, the PROM chip, the the firmware chip. That's what holds the firmware there. And we've got the RAM chip, which we're going to remove and uh, replace with a uh, a larger chunk of RAM. So these are the ones I'm using here. So the what do we got? Oh yeah. So the chip for the uh, for the firmware, I'm using an AT27C040-70. That's a 70 nanosecond. Uh, uh, like read and write time, or read time, I guess, because it's um it's a uh, read-only memory. So uh, the 27C040, that's a direct replacement. That's actually what's in there now. But if you can't get that, um, or if it's too expensive, because these are at the moment with the chip shortage and that they cost like eight bucks each. I bought two of them because I'm going to upgrade the firmware in the um in the scope itself. Uh, that'll be the subject for another video. But uh yeah, so you can use other chips, or if you've got like one in your your junk box. Uh, I'll put a link down below to the uh, EV blog forum about this uh, this mod, and uh, there's some people there that uh, have put other chips in. There's some like little jumper wires you put in because of diff slightly different pinouts and that sort of thing. But you can read through that and uh, follow along. But if you use the uh, 27C040, it's a direct drop-in replacement. So we've got those here, and we also have the RAM chip, which I'm using an IS62C1. 024AL-35 and uh, that's what's going to go in place of that chip there. Uh, 
you don't have to use this exact chip, but this the same chip with the same uh, specification. So this is a one megabyte, one twenty eight K by eight, thirty five nanoseconds, five volt. Uh, I think you can. It doesn't have to be as low as thirty five nanoseconds. Maybe seventy nanoseconds is enough. Uh, what's in there? Oh, that it's eighty five. Is the what's in the there at the moment? So I wouldn't go slower than eighty five nanoseconds. But um, yeah, five volt is uh is important. It's got to be able to handle five volts as a supply voltage. And yeah, you want a one megabyte chip, one twenty eight K by eight in the appropriate package. So it looks like they've got a dual footprint. Um, but yeah, you can uh, figure that out uh, if you're uh, getting another chip. Make sure it's the same package. So if you look up this part number, which I've uh, already put up on the screen, and it'll be down in the list below, uh, you can cross-reference that to another chip that's available locally. So first up, uh, we're going to pull. Oh, I'll pull this chip out. Um, I'm just going to use the uh, PLCC chip puller. Get that in there, and give it a. Whoop, no, didn't get it quite in there. There we go. So that's as easy as that. Um, I when I bought the uh, TL8662 Plus EEPROM programmer, I got it with a kit with all adapters and stuff, and it came with one of these. I just happened to have one as well, anyway. So, yeah, these are pretty cheap on eBay. Can be handy for doing this sort of stuff. You can get in there with some little jeweler screwdrivers and pop it out if you're really, really careful. But this is the uh, the foolproof way to do it. So that's going to go in my parts bin. Um, these are only single time right. So this basically can't be used again but if I need a spare chip you know to repair another one of these in the future I'll keep it just in case um, and yeah we'll pull that chip off of there so I think I'm gonna use a hot air gun uh, the old uh, hacko and I'll need some tweezers I use these tweezers here very often they got like little hooks on the end so they're very good for a uh, picking up SMD components and that and you can also kind of hook around a chip they kind of grip around it and it's easy to remove it from the board I don't know if that's focused it's hard to see on the small screen here hopefully that's focusing there but yeah so let's uh, get this chip off the board And there we go, looking nice. So that chip will go in the uh, parts bin as well, the old uh, RAM chip, and I'll get the new chip out. Uh, I need a knife. Uh, how many of these do I buy? I can't remember. I'm working on an anti-static uh, surface here, but before I pull these chips out, um, I will put the wrist strap on just to be safe. I should have been wearing it when I was playing with this, but yeah. It's all good. Ah, I only bought one. So that is the larger footprint there, not the small footprint. That's all good. Uh, pin one, it should go that way. Like that. 
So I'll get that all centered and we'll solder that one in. All right, got the programmer ready to go, plugged in. I've got the uh, adapter here, and we'll grab one of the chips. And that goes in that way. Like that. And then I've got the notch there, and the notch shown there. I don't know if you can see that properly, but that goes in basically like that. All right, across the computer, and we'll load the firmware. Alright, so I got the uh, the software here open, the XG Pro, the uh, the software for writing to that device. Um, I've already got the select IC here set, so 27C040, AMD, uh, it's a PLCC32 there. It, I think I've got AMD, it doesn't really matter I don't think. Anyway, um, select that and uh, All right, so I've got the uh, software here. Uh, I've already got the uh, IC selected because I um, I use it before to read the data from the uh, the chip in the uh, MM module. So it's a 27C040 in my case, and Atmel. I'm not sure if the manufacturer manufactory uh, matters, but I've said it's Atmel because that's what I've got, and I've got the PLCC32 version. So uh, that's been selected, and if we load the firmware file, um, yeah, I've got it there. So uh, that's the data there ready to to write. So if I hit the program button, we should go. Uh, AT27C040. I'm gonna flash that into the chip. It's uh in the correct position. I'll just look over there and make sure. Yes it is. And let's program. All right, that's done. So let's stick that back into the uh, the module, plug it into the scope, and see if it works. All right, let's uh, get that chip out of there. And stick that in there. And that can go in the scope. So let me get a scope here. Alright, so I've got my TDS 210, it says 220, it's still uh, identifying as a 210 because I've been swapping boards, blah 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 blah. Anyway, it works, so we're going to plug this into the back. We'll just plug it in uh, as a raw board at the moment, just to make life a bit easier, just in case something goes wrong. Alright, so I'm going to uh, play with the uh, lighting and stuff here, try and get a bit of a... A better screen. All right, let's see what happens when we turn it on. All right, booting up. And that says, looks like we're good. Nice. So if we go to, I believe it's utility system status. And we've got it there. Awesome, it works. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I will go back to the uh, 
the screen and I've got a uh, pulse generator here just a Leo Bodnar jobby and if we set this up All right, we're not pulsing into 50 ohms, um, blah, blah, blah. So that's going to be fine anyway. We're not measuring rise time. We just want to get a, uh, a display on the screen. If we go to the math menu and we should get an FFT, there it is. Aha, there we go. We can see all of our FFT stuff. Oh, not that knob, that one. There we go, look at that, we got FFT. Two enthusiastic thumbs up, fantastic, that is great. So that is working. So uh, let's turn that off, get that out of the way. All right, so we can put it back in the case. Fits in there somewhat like that. Beautiful. That is done. Upgraded to TS2MM. Gave a label so I know what's going on in the future. I don't want to peel that off. Keep it kind of original, you know, something like that. But anyway, that's um, ready to go. Fantastic. So uh, you'll find all the files on the uh, tech wiki. And as I usually say, I hope you found that uh, interesting, somewhat useful, and I hope you learned something. So uh, go forth and upgrade. We'll see you in the next one.